We did not get the 32nd Saturday Night's Main Event style promos. Just right to Elton John and then right to the, uh, well, I was going to say action, but right to the uh, verbal debate. Sure. So Adam Copeland comes out for a promo. He is interrupted by Christian, who comes out with uh, his crew of uh, Luchasaurus, Nick Wayne, and a full security team, and a new fella in a suit who I thought would get introduced here, but no. He would have suited a security guard 1A. I think he was just a random security guy. I don't think there was anything introduced. He was just an extra big guy. I think they put him in charge because he was wearing a suit. So he was in charge of the security detail. Sure. So Christian explains that uh, these men are all here for uh, Adam's protection, not his. He is in the main event. Adam's in the opener. Adam should leave. Uh, He explains that he has had the Blackpool Blackpool Combat Club banned for the building for his straight up fight with Brian Danielson. So Danielson interrupts. Interruption number two. Danielson announces Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne have also been banned from ringside. Ricky Starks is interruption number three. At this point, I am assuming Adam Copeland just brought over the SmackDown <laughs> format with him uh, to AEW. They just they just uh, whited out all the, uh, the 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 names and put in AEW guys. Uh, Ricky Starks references that this is a remake of Wild Hogs, a reference I got. I don't know if anyone else did. Uh, Starks and Adam are in the ring freestyling. We get multiple references to the oh, rock. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold yeah, on. yeah, 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 yeah. I wrote it all down because this was fucking bizarre. Mm-hmm. So Ricky and Big Bill come out, and Ricky says, I have no respect for Brian or Adam, but I do have respect for Christian. So he goes and he stands behind the security guy, who he made squat down so he could see over the guy. That guy's legs were probably killing him. So he starts cutting a promo on Danielson. But then he randomly turns to Adam Copeland and he goes, Don't look at me like that with those bug eyes, sir. I'm talking to him. And Adam says, It's your stupid silk slacks, dumbass. And I was like, What? And then Ricky says, uh, Sadly, you didn't take style from the other place. And then Adam says, And you took it from the rock. Good job. And there's like this weird, awkward pause. It was very awkward. Mm -hmm. And then Adam says, can't help that you're a vanilla midget version of that, but shut your mouth and talk to him instead of me, kid. Know your role. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? And then Ricky says, wow, that really sent me over the edge. At which point Adam just goes, oh, dude. (laughs) And I'm like, what the fuck is happening in this fucking well. segment here? Listen, I asked around. I didn't hear anything about there being any problem. Okay? Doesn't mean there's not. But <laughs> nobody said anything about there being a problem between these two guys. But that was fucking a bizarre moment. And uh, I could very much be reading too much into this. But at the end of the show, when they had that brawl, Frickin' Copeland goes running across the ring, and he booted fucking poor Ricky in the head so hard that he bounced, his head bounced off the ropes and back into the ring. And so, I don't know, man. Like everyone says, nothing's up. Maybe nothing's up. I could be a mark. But I watched that, and I was like, holy smokes, this is some weird shit going on live here. That was Uh, that. I watched and thought it was some very awkward ad-libbing from two guys who... Well, it was definitely awkward. ...who had no chemistry together. It was definitely awkward. Yeah. So, uh... Anyway, eventually we get back to business. FTR is interruption number four. They say med, the med crew gave them the option of taking the night off. They chose to defend the tag titles. This is not something like a quality med crew there. Eh. <laughs> you're, you're hurt enough to not wrestle if you don't want to, but you can. I don't know. Uh, they want to earn a rematch for the tag titles against uh, Absolutely Big. And uh, at this point, we return to the SmackDown format of Brian Danielson wanting this match right now. The only thing we were missing was in this very ring and each and every one of you. So eventually, Christian shoves his geeks forward and the baby faces kick all their asses. That was a very odd segment. It sure was, dude. It was very odd. That was really weird. Hell of a security crew, by the way. They got their ass kicked. <laughs> well, I think they might need to get a better security crew. Well, they, they, they did their jobs. Christian no, they is fine. Didn't. They got their ass kicked. That's that's their job. They all got beaten up. <clears throat> their job is to make sure Christian Cage is safe. Well, I know, Vinny, but if you're at the mall <laughs> and there's like trouble, that's not it's like no. You're no. okay, but the guy, all the security guys, get their ass kicked. That's I ain't their going job. To that mall anymore. Well, that's probably true too. But their their job is to take a bullet for Christian. Uh, listen, I ain't trusting Paul Blart or any of the other security dorks. <laughs> 
it's it's fine. All right. If you want security, hire real security and not talent enhancement. We have clips of uh, maybe if you got security that's going to be involved in brawls, don't have them show up in suits. Well, I guess that's kind of like a thing. Like they wear suits, but should they wear yeah. like athletic attire? Shouldn't your security crew show up in like MMA gear? Yeah, they they might have not had a uh, shirt big enough for the uh, the big fella. It was a big fella. I yeah, sure it was. Yeah. I'm sure he has clothes. That's the point. Well, I'm sure. sure he owns more than a suit. Yeah. Well, buddies, guys, used well they still do. They were asked to always look their best when they go to uh, to work for WWE or AEW, and they still do it to this day. So, I I'm I'm okay with that. I think it I shows. want my security looking tough. I want no. him. I want him dressed like, uh, you know, that Harris. Actually, that's a bad one. Not him. Maybe another another security guy. You know, mobsters always wore suits. Yeah, but they had weapons. Yeah. These guys. So just, the only weapons these guys had were these. Yeah. And they didn't work out very well. No, no. they should have had weapons. <laughs> yes. They're much they better sh- off. They should have been armed with a baton or something. Well, anyway. Speaking yeah. of weird ass segments, so then oh we had Samoa Joe and Willie Mack. This was fine. Well, they, oh they, and the MGF thing. Those uh, were both fine. I, I jumped forward. Well, to the MGF is more than fine. The I MGF, jumped up to the CJ promo. That was weird. That was. No, we'll get to that. But oh, uh, th- this MGF thing was short but very important. MGF is one of the celebrities appearing at Robert Kraft's stand up to Jewish hate thing. There is a rise in anti Semitic t- attacks. It sucks. Uh, it's before the past week. It's been going on for a while. It's actually going on for several years, in fact. Uh, so Robert Kraft. I would say the, centuries. Well, yes, but it's the the uptick in the. Yeah. So uh, Robert Kraft, New England, New England Patriots owner, and as MGF called him, huge, massive MJF Mark. That's what he said. Yeah. Julian Edelman from the Patriots is there, and they'll explain uh, how important it is to, to literally stand up to this kind of thing, and how important it is for athletes like MJF and Edelman to show uh, th- that uh, young Jewish kids have. Role models, Russian, MJF's not a role model, but uh, examples to look up to for standing up to yourself. That's a better way to put it. Samoa Joe versus Willie Mack. I feel like I have the same reaction every single time I see a Willie Mack match. That guy rules. Why is he not on TV more? Well, he was on TV. National TV. I realize that. Live. Will he be here next but week? he was beaten. I don't know. Well, isn't he on Impact? Probably. Like a lot? Yeah, he probably has been. But uh, he should be on this show. Anyway, they had an all-action, back-and-forth sprint of a mean guy match. Loved it. Uh, Willie appeared to break his neck taking a power slam. Apparently he's alive. Uh, He popped up in his stunner for two. He goes up top for a frog splash, but Joe cuts him off, brings him down from there, and a muscle buster for the win. Love this. Love this, love this. I loved it on him landing on his head. That part sucked. But uh, the thing with this, this show was, like, the main event got, like, a ton of time, but nothing else got a lot of time at all. No. And uh, this could have used another easy 10 minutes. It was just kind of a, you know, simple TV match. Samoa Joe retains his title. But uh, Willie Mack is a underutilized bloke. That yes. I can say. Yeah, that uh, that power slam spot looked uh, terrifying. So, hope he's okay. I mean. He appears to be, uh, wait, he, he did lose. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. 
thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, tens of thousands of hours of audio, all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.